Hello and welcome to your digital classroom study with Sudhir. Tomorrow is the English language examination for the ICSE class 9 students. So that's why we are focusing on English language. But all this that we are teaching and focusing on will also be useful for the class 10 students whose, whose English language examination is on the 27th of February. The fifth question C part is basically talking about talks about joining the following sentences to make one complete sentence without using and but or so. This is a four marks question. You are given four um, uh, particular questions but many students make the mistakes. They are not able to get the tense right when they are actually joining the two sentences. Now what do you do when you do not when you are not allowed to use and but or so. You need to use phrases like in spite of, you can use besides, you can use therefore. And so what we'll do is that we will take some examples just to kind of get give you a better sense of how these kind of combinations are essentially done. So just look through the examples, but through the evening, especially for class 9 students and of course for class 10 students right till February 26, please do practice a large number of these from the different grammar books. Any grammar book available in the market will do so long as you are getting quality practice that's what your focus really should be so let's be, look at different kind of two sentences which you will be asked to join into a single sentence without using and but or so okay so for instance a very simple thing like you know what happens in your school the bell rang full stop the classes began the bell rang full stop the classes began now, how would you uh, join it without using and, but or so? When the bell rang, comma, the classes began. Please take care to put the comma. That is the most important part as far as this particular answer is concerned. When the bell rang, comma, the classes began. Uh, you will pass. Full stop. Work hard. You know what your parents must be telling you at this point in time. You will pass. Work hard. You will pass if you will if you work hard. You will pass if you work hard. Okay. If is the um, word which will be used to combine the sentences in this particular case. Uh, uh, you kept it somewhere. Tell me the place. You kept it somewhere. Full stop. Tell me the place. Tell me the place where you kept it. These are all examples that I am taking from the Total English, which I believe is one of the best books available uh, in order to just illustrate the kind of combinations that are essentially done, the kind of examples that you need to know of what works where and the different kind of words that you would be able to use in order to combine these two different sentences. Okay, so uh, sometimes uh, facts are stated. For instance, the sun rises in the east, this is obvious. Okay, that the sun rises in the east is obvious you know so you there is a sense of emphasis with the fact because the sun rises in the east we know that the second sentence is actually emphasizing and underlining it that much more by saying that is obvious that the sun rises in the east is obvious do not make the mistake of is writing the sun rises in the east and that is obvious you know because that gives you a sense of not being emphatic enough so always when you are combining the sentence Read the two disparate sentences first and understand the kind of essence that it is trying to drive at and then try to combine the sentence. Choose the most appropriate word to combine the two sentences. That is something which you need to take care of. Let's look at some other examples and this is something which comes and always at least one of the four uh, questions that will be given will end up using neither nor. He is not strong, full stop. He is not brave. He is not strong. He is not brave. He is neither strong nor brave. Okay. You understood. So neither nor either or how do you combine? You need to know that. Now uh, he must apologize. Full stop. He will be punished. He must apologize. So you get the sense of the word. What is the two sentences trying to convey? He must apologize. He will be punished, which means that he will be, he must apologize or he will be punished. If he does not apologize, he will be punished. So he must apologize or he will be punished. Okay. So these are the thing. And when you are doing that, ensure 
that you take care of the full stops and the comma. Remember, this is an English language and grammar examination. So you cannot afford to miss out on these kind of punctuation marks. Then another word which is usually used to combine these sentences is nevertheless. Apart from besides, in spite of, despite, uh, nevertheless is another word. I'll give you an example. He fell down, full stop, he persevered. Just like in the nine gold medals poem, you know, the athletes, athlete fell down. But of course, in that case, he did not. But he also got up. He fell down, full stop. He persevered. Persevered means he still was wanting to go for it. He went for it. He fell down. Nevertheless, he persevered. He fell down. Nevertheless, he persevered. So you also need to get a sense of where, what kind of word can be used in order to combine the two sentences. Another word is yet. She was annoyed. She kept quiet. She was annoyed. Yet she kept quiet. You know. She was not very happy with the turn of things or the behavior of a particular person, yet she kept quiet. Okay. Then let's look at another example. Uh, this is again uh, about something which is some kind of an action which is taking place. The sun set, we came in and this is, this is slightly different and a slightly different way of combining a sentence. The sun set, we came in. That is, you have played for the day, but when the sun set, we came back to our house. That's the essence of the sentence. Now that you have understood the essence of the sentence, how will you combine it? The sun having set, we came in. Because the sun set, you know, if you had put the sun set and we came in, that's, that would have been one way of combining it. But here we are talking about having come in only because the sun had set. set. Understood? Because the sun had set, so there was some kind of an action involved because of which you were kind of compelled, forced to come back home. So the sun having set, because that was the reason we came in, right? The weather was pleasant, we went for a walk. The weather being pleasant, we went for a walk, comma in between. The weather being pleasant, comma we went for a walk. So, this, these are slightly tricky ones where you need to understand that you are going out because the weather was pleasant. If the weather was hot and muggy, you would not have gone out. If it was raining, you may not have gone out. But the weather being pleasant was the reason why you went out. So, the weather being pleasant, comma, we went for a walk. So, please look at the essence of the two separate sentences and then decide what would be the most appropriate word in order to combine the two. Okay. Another um, um, example of the of a similar kind. And this uses the word uh, in spite of and besides what I was telling you about. He is poor, he is honest. Now, look at the sentences and look at the two adjectives which are used. Poor and honest. He is poor, he is honest. Normally, what you would think that, you know, people who are poor obviously need the money they don't have the money so would they be honest you know there would be that kind of a dilemma though i mean not a very politically correct thing to say so what you how you think in spite of being poor he's honest because you generally believe that if someone does not have money there would be a at least a temptation at least a temptation would be there to somehow somehow or the other try to earn money so in spite of being poor comma he is honest Okay, he made a promise, he kept it also. He made a promise, full stop, he kept it also. Besides making a promise, he kept it also. He not just made it, because a lot of people make a lot of tall promises. Ki I will do this, I will do that. Not everyone keeps the promise and keeps his word and fulfills that promise. But besides keep making a promise, comma, he kept it also. So that's how you need to combine this these two sentences. The sunset, another one involving this sunset. The sun set, set as in a verb, the children had not finished the game. So the sun set, but the children had not finished the game. But you are not allowed to use the word but. So how will you combine the two sentences? The children had not finished the game by sunset. Now that's a more intelligent way of combining the two sentences. You know, normally you would think the sun had set, but the children had not finished the game. That would be a choice you would have. But in this case, you are not allowed to use the combination word of but. 
so the children had not finished the game by sunset the train was crowded that is unusual you know afternoon time maybe you did not expect the train to be crowded so the train was crowded full stop that is unusual so how do you combine this thing it was uh, the train was unusually crowded the train was unusually crowded you know so that's how you will combine this kind of two sentences a soldier had a horse the soldier was brave a brave soldier had a horse you know it just kind of you know because both are talking about the soldier the same soldier that he was brave and he had a horse so the brave soldier had a horse the traveler made many discoveries they were wonderful the traveler made many wonderful discoveries so you just need to remove the adjective from the second sentence and put it into the first sentence and combine it like that so that's how these sentences are to be um, uh, you i mean these kind of combination of sentences which account for four marks in your grammar paper need to be taken care of they are not very complicated but while doing so always try to understand the three rules that i have set out for you understand the essence of the two separate sentences then choose the most appropriate sentence a word to combine the two sentences look for different kind of option and then decide okay this is what fits best don't jump into the first one that comes to your mind number 3 while doing so ensure that your tense the grammar of the sentence is correct this is something these are the three rules which you have need to follow while you are combining the sentences but please practice this a lot because that is something which you will need to do in order to ensure that you do not make any mistakes because there are different ways of combining the same sentence but since you cannot use and but and so you need to be very careful about which are the other words that you are using and whether they actually fit the bill to the t okay thank you very much for watching